So for those of you guys that have been watching my videos for a while on Groff, you've probably realized that I haven't really covered any way to do a table of contents. And the reason for this is that it's kind of handled differently in different macros, but the ones that I like to use is the MS macros. So today I'm going to focus on the MS macros and hopefully I'll get a chance to focus on the other macros at some point and how they use, how they create table of contents. If you guys are interested in learning more about Groff and things like it, make sure to subscribe down below and hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. Without any more delays, let's get right into it. All right, so right here, I just have a very simple MS file that we're gonna be using. And so just to start off, let's give it a title. So the important macros that you use when you're creating a table of contents, or the important macro that you use for creating a table of contents in the MS macro package is .xs for start, .xe, e for end. And then there's actually an extra one um, called dot x a and so basically what you can do is when you're creating this you're going to do so there's two approaches to doing this that you guys can think of one of them is creating the table of contents as you write and one of them is creating it ahead of time now creating it ahead of time i find can be a bit of a hassle and you have to create it beforehand but if you do this you can make your compilation faster but first off i'm just going to show you it the way that i like to do it which is without writing it beforehand so how you do this is you create a new heading and you can do dot n h and you give it a heading, so let's call it heading. And then you create a table of contents index for it. So let's just call this one heading, which is what we would want to call it, obviously, because that's kind of our heading, so it makes sense to call it that. And then we can make another one called so dot and h um, heading two. And then we're going to do dot xs dot xe um, heading two. And then if I open it, you'll see that. We, just like normal, have our title, our author, and our headings. But there's no table of contents yet. Now what I can do is I can tell Groff to create my table of contents by doing dot .tc for a table of contents. That's kind of how I think of it. And then you'll see that we have a table of contents and then our Groff file. And since they're both on the first page, it will just say that they're both on the first page. But if I did, say for example, I page break here, I recompiled it, it would update the actual page number. And so the reason that it's already putting the table of contents in the right spot is because I'm actually compiling it right now using, so if I ran this normally, so I'm compiling this with our file, with the MS macros and outputting it to a PDF. If I ran that, we'd see that we have our title and our heading, but our table of contents is at the bottom of the file. So what you guys can do to fix that is you can do the same thing, but using, so using PDDF raw instead. But if I run that anyways, I'm still going to get the same output. And the way that you guys fix this is you actually did just ms, .ms PDF, which is basically a modified version of the MS macros to work better with PDFs. And then when you run it like that, Groff knows to relocate it to the top. Now, something you guys will notice with bigger Groff documents is that if you use PDF Roth all the time, uh, it can kind of slow down. So what you guys can do is you can use Groff uh, dash P PDF normal work. And then when you guys want to actually create your final version, I like to go the same way, but using PDF raw. And then that way my table of contents is relocated. There's other ways to do this, but I like to use this method. So one of the really great things you guys get out of using the uh, MS PDF macros is that you can actually do some really cool tricks. So for example, instead of doing XS and XE, you can actually just replace all this with dot XN and then quote the name of, name of your heading and then let's do this here as well. And now it will do the same thing, but I'm actually cutting out a bunch of extra writing and I'm not having to do XS and XE. And I get all these great parts added in. And one of the other cool things is that you actually get PDF bookmarks automatically. So if I open up my PDF bookmarks, there's actually one for heading one, so I can quickly jump to it. One for heading two, so I can quickly jump to it. And one for my table of contents. In order for this to be working properly, you actually have to be compiling with the MS PDF though. So you cannot be using just the base MS macros because if I just run that with the base MS macros, I'm just not gonna have anything in my heading because the .xn macro doesn't exist yet. So you have to use MS, uh, MS PDF, but it does give you a lot of power. It's really awesome. I use uh, MS PDF most of the time if I'm producing a PDF. There's not really any reason not to use it anyways because if you just did this normally but didn't use the MS PDF macros anyways, you obviously wouldn't have a table of index part marked because it hasn't been used yet, but you still get headings working normally and everything looks right. So, And you can still use .xs and .xe. 
for creating your table of contents, but you still would have to add your headings. I highly recommend that you guys use the .ms PDF macros. They're very useful for creating the table of contents like this, but if you guys are using just a different version of trough, then I would use the MS macros and create the table of contents like I mentioned here. Now, another thing you guys can do if you really don't want to use PDF Roth or anything like that, you can actually do this. So instead you do XS dot XA dot XE, and then you can put your TC right there, and then you can just delete all these headings. For my first heading, I can do just heading one, heading two, two. And so now when I compile that, it will actually create my uh, table of contents, and it will give it the page number, and the page number actually just comes from what this second argument is, okay? And so dot XA is pretty much what you use to keep adding table of contents. If I do this again, you'll see that it puts on page three. So on page three, it creates another index on the table of contents for heading two. Something I forgot to mention was that if you guys want your title to be placed after your table of contents, you need to have TC called before your title, All right? And there is a way to basically like move your title to a separate second page if you want, but I just use uh, BP to make things easier. But if you guys want to learn more about that, I highly recommend looking at the Groff documentation. There's a lot of different uh, little tricks they have in there. And like I said before, if you guys do create your table of contents by hand, you do lose out on a lot of convenience and you also don't automatically have those uh, bookmarks made. The reason that PDF Roth actually slows things down is basically because PDF Roth has to repeatedly run through the document and find all of the references. So basically, PDF ROF will have to run at least twice through your file. So it's basically like running Groff twice. And it can even run more times if you add more PDF references to it. So I highly recommend that you guys uh, try not to use it on big documents at, at the start and then just use that whenever you're producing your final document. Thanks for watching, guys. I know this video is a bit short, but I wanted to really cover the table of contents because I know it can be really useful for a lot of you guys. And I highly recommend that everybody knows how this works because I will definitely mention it in a future video. If you guys learned something from this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for more Groff videos, and comment down below letting me know how useful you think a table of contents would be, if there's anything that you think that I should have covered that you guys use in for something like LaTeX or uh, Pandoc or anything like that that you think I should have covered. Thanks, see you next time.